Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, we're kicking off a, a mini-series, um, Not For TV. Well, wait a minute. If you're watching this message on YouTube, I guess it is for TV. Anyway, the subject of our series is developing and keeping uh, great relationships. You know, as humans, we were made for relationships. It's hardwired right into us. You know, in the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image. Those plural pronouns there, are the let us and let our, point to the fact that God has always existed in community. You know, assuming the Father is talking, uh, he would be talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, right? And there's this wonderful plural, plurality about him. Because, you know, we were created in the image of God. That desire for community, you know, is built right in. We need people in our lives. And there's very few people that can live in isolation. Um, there's all kind, you know, all kinds of different relationships that we have, and they're all necessary. They all fill a vital role in our lives. We need friends and coworkers, not just family. Uh, and this is especially apparent in this season of lockdown, right? But no matter what type of relationship we're talking about, we all share some common threads, and those threads, you know, need to be tended and strengthen the relationship, and it will flourish. There's an old adage that says, um, "Show me your kid's friends, and I'll show you his future." You know, as parents, we know this. That's why little Henry could never hang out with little Damien. But, you know, we fail to realize we don't outgrow that. Our friends determine the direction and quality of our life. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Still holds true as adults. Guys, we need friends. We were made for friends. You know, we can't have too many friends. Well, I guess unless you win the lotto, then you could have too many friends. But for us normal non-millionaires, we can't have too many friends. They enrich our lives. So how can we cultivate and keep great friendships? Because I want us to grow and thrive in our time here in this old sod. So we could take this to this logical conclusion. You know, if our friends determine the direction and quality of our lives, it's best to be surrounding ourselves with good quality friends. Amen? But to have a quality friend... You have to be a friend of good quality, too. You know, I tell guys all the time, you know, they're looking for the perfect girl to marry. You know, my best advice, first, it's never going to happen until you become the perfect guy. The perfect girl wouldn't even be interested in you till then, right? But um, when you are the perfect guy, the perfect girl will find you. So to have quality friends, you have to be a quality friend. So how do you become a quality friend? And I think most of us know this intuitively, but sometimes we need a little refresher. Great friendships, great relationships don't just happen. They are made. Just like great marriages don't just happen. They're worked for. So too, you know, with all of our relationships. You know, with this pandemic still looming, it's such an important topic for today. Uh, you know, it's so important. We'll spend the next six or eight weeks here. <laughs> My poor wife has really been suffering from a friend deficit lately. You know, she's kind of isolated herself to keep her si safe, and she misses all you guys desperately. You know, she'll tell everyone I'm her best friend, but I'm really not. I'm her husband. You know, I try and fill in, but, man, I just don't have it in me to thrift store shop till I drop. You know, and her and Charlie used to go do acupuncture together. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You need your friend for that, babe. Count me out. You know, she just needs friends and family, and spouse won't do it. Um... Same for all of us. We need friends. And they say this is you know, one of the biggest contributing factors to pastor burnout. They don't have enough friends. You know, I was in a cool spot uh, because I was most of your friends before I was your pastor. But that's not true for a lot of pastors. They're called to a church. They know no, no one. But we all need friends. So the question, we're going to wrestle to the ground today. How do we cultivate great friendships that stand the test of time? You know, I was sitting here changing the computer writing this other day. I was like, ah, I'm wasting time. I should be out working on building great relationships. And I want to just stop and go practice cultivating some great relationships. But I need to share this with you guys so we could take these steps together. Now, there's some common things uh, that maybe we've known but forgotten. Uh, maybe we've never heard before. Uh, things that go into building a great relationship. So for all of us, it's not a bad thing to, it's not a bad thing to review. You know, because the world is watching. We need to model kingdom values. And this should show in all of our relationships. When people ask, man, how is it that you have such great friendships? We could just say, man, it's with his help. We could tell them, man, we love people like Jesus loved people. And he gave his life for all of us so we can live in the light of his love. You know, the bedrock, though, of any relationship is communication. 
Now, you can love someone to the moon, but if you never communicate to that person, how will they know? <laughs> I read an old story one time about this old rancher dude. He comes in for lunch one day, and his wife is all distraught. I don't know. She's in tears. The guy's clueless what's the matter. Finally, you know, they got to go see the pastor, and they're sitting in his office, and, and the woman's in tears. The guy's still just, duh, on what's the matter. Finally, she bursts out between sobs. He doesn't love me anymore. The old guy's incredulous. What? Why would you think that? And she says, you never tell me you love me. Woman, he says, I told you I loved you on the day we were married. And if anything changes, I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> Women are funny, though. They need to hear it. We need to speak it. It's the same thing goes for our friends. So, you know, today I want to explore ways to enhance our communication skills. And I don't think you know it all because sometimes we just need to be reminded, huh? And next week, we'll look at the currency of our relationships, uh, time. So that's for next week. But if this statement is true, and I believe it is, you know, your friends determine the direction and quality of your life, we want to develop some great quality friendships. You know, I could even go out on a limb here and say God wants us to develop some great relationships because He loves us and He wants us to be all we can be. Amen? And just like we want great friends for our kids, man, He wants great friends for us too. You know, and good news is we could all learn to be a good friend and have a great relationship. So this, this series is designed to strengthen existing relationships and maybe as a guide to create some new ones. There's a verse in Proverbs I shared with you guys last week. It really caught my attention. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Because whoever has your heart has you. And likewise, whoever's heart you have is yours. You know, good communication you know, is an important way to capture and keep a person's heart. Your spouse needs to hear you love them. Your kids need to hear that. And we don't ever grow out of this. Man, our friends need to hear, I love you, buddy. You know, Paul wrote about a great verse about communication in his letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians 4.29. And i give you a second to turn there. I guess if you're watching this on video, you can just hit pause, huh? But man, this is a great verse. It'd be cool to commit it to memory or tattooed on the inside of your eyeballs for every time you blink, you could be reminded of it. Then highlight it in your Bible. Dog ear the page so you can find it quick. I'm kind of hard on Bibles, but I love to wear them out. Then I get a new one. Uh, Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful, helpful for building others up according to their needs, so that it may benefit those who listen. Man, let me read it again. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And how many marriages could be saved if couples just obeyed this one verse? How many jobs would not have been lost? How many fights not started? How many politicians would have nothing to say if they obeyed this verse? Sorry, that wasn't very nice, but it was funny, yeah. We have a beautiful gift in speech, and with great gifts comes great responsibilities. So we're to use our speech to build others up according to their needs. Man, what a great way to build a strong relationship, by blessing others with our speech. Wise old Solomon wrote in Proverbs 16, 24, Gracious speech is like clover honey, good taste to the soul, and quick energy for the body. Now you got to remember when Solomon wrote this, there was like no Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia ice cream to compare to. Man, clover honey was about as sweet as things got. And it was pretty hard to come by. Can you imagine what a sugar rush you'd have if you'd never had sugar? Then to get a spoonful of pure honey. Wow, what a rush. <laughs> I took the boys to pizza one time. The girls were having a baby shower. and I think Logan was only like four. And his mom always fed him no healthy, no sugar, junk food. Well, I got a picture of Sierra Mist because, you know, that didn't have caffeine. I thought that'd be okay, uh, but I didn't think about the sugar. Oh, whoa, buddy. <laughs> the effect it had on Logan. He went from calm and sitting in the booth to walking on top of the booth, <laughs> you know, as the sugar kicked in. Hey, he was wound up. But, you know, that's what Grace's speech is like in a good way. It's invigorating, good for the soul and energy for the body. Isn't it fun to spend time with an encouraging person?
good taste to the soul. It just seems like we live in a world now that has elevated um, criticism and negativity to an art form. It is so refreshing to be around a positive person. You know, a positive person is one who encourages us to chase down our dreams. Man, you can do it. Who's always pulling for us to be all we can be. Because we want to cultivate and become the person we most like to be around. And it starts with speech. Gracious speech. Like honey speech. All of our communication. And using all your speech to build others up. This is the way to captivate and keep someone's heart. Talk to them, encourage them, build them up. So much of our time and conversation with others is spent in comparing, judging, and critiquing others. Man, it has no place in a healthy relationship. Man, no need to lecture someone if you'd like to cultivate a great relationship with them. Because when you do that, man, the walls go up. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Judging, criticizing, that's unwholesome stuff. Filter it, don't let it come out. But if it does, be quick to say you're sorry. <laughs> I bought a new water filter for our fridge. Man, it was 40 bucks. I was thinking, man, I wish I could buy one for me. I'd pay 10 times that, 100 times that much. Unfortunately, <laughs> no such filter exists. Now, my son-in-law is a pretty good inventor, though. I might have to... <laughs> no. But if we could just train ourselves to think before we speak. Maybe that's why James said, be quick to listen and slow to speak. He was bringing everything through the filter first. You know, there's some aspects of communication that we might miss. For instance, did you know that listening is a vital part of communication? But listening like you care, not just listening until there's a break and you can start talking again. <laughs> sure, I went back to school to get her nursing degree. You know, I did all I could to help. And she had some prerequisites to bang out first. So so I would help. I would I read her history book to her and put it on a cassette tape so she could listen to it in the car. Uh, in case she'd have, you know, she didn't have time to read for a couple hours when she got home. Um, this was during the winter when I was off in the woods. And then I went back to work and she started taking the nurses, nursing classes, you know, anatomy and physiology and microbiology. Ah, good stuff like that. I was sitting on the counter in the kitchen one night watching dinner. Sorry, I coughed to that. As a professional food handler now, I know butts don't belong on the counter. But I was just a d dumb timber faller back then. Anyway, I was sitting there keeping a, an eye on dinner. And Cheryl got home and the usual how's your day stuff. Um, anything exciting happened? Oh, man, she was all excited about permeable membrane. And she's explaining this to me. And I'm not doing a very good job of looking interested. And I, she calls me on it. Pay attention. Oh, babe. Um, you're speaking a foreign language. You're speaking medical. And I'll never forget her response. Well, you should have kept up. <laughs> I don't know if I could have done that work full time. Um, but I could have done a better job of being interested. Listening and really paying attention is vital to good communication. That's what poor James wrote. We should be quick to listen, slow to speak. And good listeners make great friends. And remember... Our friends determine the direction and quality of our life. Guys, we want to live a great life. Let's cultivate and become some great friends. Develop great relationships that honor God and point people to Jesus. You know, there's so many other things I could talk about in regard to communication. But for now, let's concentrate and gain our filters on. No unwholesome words comes out, but only what is good for building others up. Bless others with our speech. And let's be good listeners. I love you guys. Have a great week. Thanks for watching.